Erev Tov, I'm Stephen Ben Danoon, and you're watching Israeli News Live. Uh, today we have a lot of in in interesting information coming out of Israel. There are the, it seems every nation wants to be troubled with Israel, wants to be troubled specifically with Jerusalem. And uh, those of you that are not aware, Israel had announced there were going to be 2,500 new homes that were going to be permanent to be built uh, in Jerusalem, as well as Judea and Samaria for the Jewish people. And then the outcry with the United States and with the European Union and threats against Netanyahu, if he did such a, uh, continued on with the, with the actually building projects, was too much for the prime minister to handle. And so there was a freeze put on it. But then ironically today, there was approved 2,700 permits for new homes in East Jerusalem for the Arab uh, Israelis in, in that area there. So, well, as we see, that it's quite obviously not in the favor of Israel. And of course, the famous scripture that we all know, Zechariah 12:3, and in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Interesting, isn't it? Well, no doubt, Israel is in her homeland, and this is why they are so burdened about this city. You would think that perhaps the President of the United States would have enough insight to know what the Word of God says, but I guess like Pharaoh of Egypt, he no doubt looks down just as the Pope of uh, Rome looks over at Israel and says, Who is the God of Israel? I do not know him, neither do I know his name. Well, it is true. They do not know his name. At any rate, let me bring on uh, Brother Rick. Uh, Brother Rick, uh, uh, the former, former Navy SEAL of the United States uh, Military Service, uh, combat veteran, to analyze some of the things that are going on in Israel. So, anyhow, we have uh, Brother Rick. Uh, Brother Rick is, uh, lives in Texas. He is a former Navy SEAL. And we were going to talk a little bit today about the events that are happening in Israel. And uh, Brother Rick, as I mentioned to the people just before uh, bringing you on here, uh, the famous scripture that we all know in Zechariah 12, uh, chap uh, chapter 12, verse 3 there, about uh, the world burdening themselves with Jerusalem. And, and, the, and, the, and the fact of what God says He's going to do, He said, all those that, uh, actually I have it right before me, and in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people and all that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, although all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. It's amazing, especially in light of the building uh, projects that we've seen the different announcements this week where Netanyahu was going to build 2,500, uh, uh, they were going to pass 2,500 permits for, for, for the Jewish people in Samaria, Judea, and, and Jerusalem, but that all got froze uh, due to the threats from the United States. And, uh, and also the EU is behind a lot of that threatening as well. And, but yet then today, if I'm not mistaken, either today or yesterday, one, they approved 2,700 permits for the Arab Israelis uh, to build uh, new homes for them in, the, in, in East Jerusalem. What's your thought on this? That's correct, Stephen. And you, you know, you, you read the verse, and the, the operative word was all. Uh, yes. All nations. And, um, and, and that's so true. It's going to be a burden for all nations, and it is. I just pulled up that news article like you, like you had mentioned. There were 2,500 uh, homes that were going to be built um, in Judea, Samaria, and I think some of them were in Jerusalem. And they've been, there, they've been put on hold. Uh, but as of a report, that I, and I just pulled it back up, it was published at uh, 8 in the evening. Uh, that's Jerusalem time. That Jerusalem to build 2,500 housing units in Arab neighborhoods. That was approved today. So we'll see if that actually happens, but um, it's kind of a slap in the face, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely a slap in the face. And it just goes to show that the prophecy is, is right there on the doorsteps. And the world, ironically, the, the rest of the world though many of the people that are opposing Israel and what Israel is trying to do, they're aware of these Bible verses. You know, what's, what's kind of ironic is a lot of governments, they will consult 
uh, different biblical scholars. They will consult Bible code experts as to what may be the outcomes of the wars and things. And, and, and I'm just kind of fascinated by the fact that they'll do this. So th there, it cannot be without a doubt that they're aware of this verse. And, and, and it kind of reminds me too of when Yeshua was here, when he was born and came to the earth. And uh, I believe it was Herod that actually asked, you know, does the scripture say that there is where the, or where would the Messiah come from? So government official is asking about where will the Messiah come from? So certainly governments today are still curious as to whether or not they're stepping on God's toes. I think, yeah, you, you know, I wonder who's reading it. I have no doubt that, um, that some of the people in the government are reading that, but it, it almost seems as if they're, they're trying to oppose it, as if they think they can win. Stephen, it's a little crazy, but I mean, what, what's going on with this 25, you know, 2,500 units, and I haven't uh, watched the, the mainstream news or the lamestream news uh, in the past couple of days, but I'm, 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 gonna, I'm speculating a bit here, but it's probably not all over the front. It's not on the front page of all the you know, mainstream uh, media web pages. Um, but it sure was when the Israelis were going to start building in Judea and Samaria. And now this was just approved, and we'll see what's happening. Uh, we'll see what happens with it. But, you know, one thing, one thing that I, I believe pretty firmly is, uh, and this is based on comments from the EU and the United States, and we can, we can read between the lines, and, and it's not really that tough. But the EU and the United States are bent on a two-state solution. They are bent on the Israelis not building on their land. And, you know, again, we, you know, we mentioned this on the, on the first news broadcast that I came on. You know, the Israelis are not occupiers. They are the owners. When you own a piece of property, you're not an occupier. If someone squats on your property, they are occupying your property. And um, the borders of Israel really are much greater than they are now, according to God. And so that's what, you know, that's, that's what I'm, that's what we look at. That's what you and I look at. And uh, it's just crazy. But I know Nate Yano, he has to be under tremendous pressure uh, because I just don't think he's the type of man that caves. And I see him getting beat up pretty bad. And some of the comments, I usually read the comments below the news articles um, in the Israeli national news, and he's, and he's getting beat up pretty bad. But I, I just don't think he's trying to hurt his own people or his country. I think he's doing the best job that he can. So Dude, under the uh, pressure that he's under, you know, and, and and that's true because he is under a tremendous amount of pressure. I mean, as much as he may believe the word of God and know these things, it may be that the Prime Minister Netanyahu is actually just hoping and praying himself that God will intervene because he knows he's in a in a tough spot. That's why God says in Micah, uh, "Where is your king?" And because Israel rejected the prophet Samuel, wanted a king, and then we end up in the situation we did. We had a, a political leader in this case, a king over Israel, but it ended up with Ahab, which sent our country really spiraling down the uh, tubes there. Um, you know, there's one thing, though, too, Brother Rick, that I could not help but think of in this whole scenario. When we think about Israel being a, 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 the chosen of God, some people, because I, sometimes I try to sit there and I try to reason in my mind, why would the nation, such as the United States, why would the leadership in the United States, the leaderships uh, throughout the Europe, Europe itself, all the different countries there, go against Israel as that being their homeland? Now, the reason why I bring this up is because Israel, we know that God sent Israel to the promised land and God had commanded Joshua that they were to fight. He, he said, I, give, I gave you this land. He said, now go take it. So Israel did, like America, they came and they drove back the occupants. Uh, the Indians in America were driven back by, by the Americans. And to this day, the Indians are still driven back. So, but God gave Israel that land. They took it. They were in it until sin crept in. And of course, it caused Israel to go into exile. Now, that saying, this is probably one reason why a lot of the Arab nations say, well, this land belongs to us. We were there first or whatever the case may be. But the ironic thing is, though, are, these, are the, the nations in the European Union, the United States itself, 
are nations that are, they're quote unquote, Christian nations, so to speak, even the EU is supposed, supposedly built upon a Christian value, especially Great Britain, Germany, places like that. Um, and yet, there is, 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 when you look at the United States, it's, it, more specifically, the United States' own constitution and its founding fathers built it on the principles of the Bible using uh, the Jewish Bible, the, the Tanakh, as we call it, they were using that as their principal guideline, so they know that they have a right to that land, and yet the administration here, as well as uh, in the European Union and, 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 the, and, and in, uh, Great Britain, etc., they're all against Israel having back the land that they know that belongs to them, that they know that God gave it to them, and their very principles of their own nations, they're denying the principle that God has given them for this land. I think it's not just, I don't think they're just against Israel having their nation. I think they're against Israel as a country and as a people. I, I firmly believe that. All you have to look at the last thousand years of history, Stephen, and this is a recurring pattern. It's, an, it's a recurring theme. And so the fact that the world is turning against them once again and wanting to remove them or uh, remove any validity, remove their claim to the land, uh, to the land, I guess, I don't know that we should be too surprised by it. I mean, this has happened before. And everything that ha has happened before will happen again. Um, and so we're, we're kind of seeing that. But it's... I believe it's a foregone conclusion that Israel, that it's going to, the two-state solution is going to be forced upon Israel. And I think there's a good chance, sir, they're going to lose Jerusalem. Now, Jerusalem, again, it's, it's the key. It's not, that, it's not just about Judea and Samaria. The key really is Jerusalem. Um, so how is that going to play out? I don't think the Israelis would be willing to, to give that up, regardless of who was pressuring them. And... The, the Muslims, they're not going to give up Jerusalem as a claim either. And so this sets up an interesting scenario where you may have to, for some type of peace agreement, a third-party mediator may come in or a third-party administrator. Um, in, in business, sometimes if you have two partners that are quarreling in a business, they're filing legal actions against each other, the judge may step in and say, I'm going to appoint a receiver. And a receiver is it's basically an attorney that the court points to run the company or to manage certain parts of the company because the parties can't agree. And I could just see a scenario like that playing out where they really have no choice but to accept something like that. And who's the administrator? I don't know. But I could see a scenario that I would see that as a best case scenario. Exactly. I can certainly understand that. And if you were to ask Shimon Perez, he's already said that uh, Pope Francis is the only man that can bring peace to the Middle East. So if we were to ask him to vote today, we already know where his vote would be cast. And I'm sure there's many more that would back him. Uh, one other bit of news I'd like to mention to you that, uh, that, is, that just came out on Israel's national news, and that is that the I, IAEA, uh, they are getting ready to bring out their official report with uh, Iran on their nuclear... Uh, the, the work they've been doing over there, and as you can see in the article on Israel's national news, uh, they've not made much headway, and uh, it's becoming very much alarming uh, regarding that. They're actually bringing out their report a little bit early, and uh, which is kind of interesting because uh, con uh, hours after Israeli minister's uh, intelligence, Yuval Steinlitz warned that Iran is closer than ever to nuclear capabilities. Uh, that's uh, this... His comments had just came out when this, right before this article came out. So um, I think we're dealing with a, as we would say, at a powder keg, and it's about ready to blow. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. No, go right ahead. I'm, it's a big, yeah, no, no, Stephen, it's a big powder keg. And, and when a politician is saying there's little headway, that really means there's no headway or we're actually going backwards, okay? Because that's really, that's, that's, that's a best case scenario. So if they're saying there's little headway, that means there's absolutely no headway. And Iran has continued, <clears throat> continued with their development, and they are closer. And I don't believe that, I, I don't know, or I don't really believe, I don't have confidence, let me put it that way, that the United States is going to do anything. I don't think it's in their interest. And well, I think they're going to rely on Israel to do something. And then, again... 
they'll be the they'll be the bad guy for doing what we should. Of course, have done. absolutely. That's what's kind of ironic in itself, uh, Rick. Is that uh, Israel is the one that always ends up dealing with all the problems in the Middle East. Uh, one part of this article, I'd just like to read this uh, real quick. The says the uh, the United Nations uh, nuclear watchdog is, is expected to issue a report this week showing little progress is being made in the long running investigation into suspected atomic bomb research by Iran. Dipl diplomats told the Reuters news agency on Wednesday, the unnamed diplomat said, Quarterly International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, that is, a report on Iran was likely to confirm that Tehran failed to meet a late August deadline for answering questions about its atomic activities. Western, Western officials may see the lack of movement as a setback for a broader effort to end the decade-old dispute over a nuclear program, which Iran says it's peaceful, but which they fear may be aimed at developing a nuclear weapons capability. And last little part here I want to bring out. The IAEA uh, is expected to issue its confidential report to member states on Thursday or Friday ahead of September 15th through the 19th meetings on the IAEA's 35-nation Board of Governors. There was no comment from Vienna based on the UN agencies to diplomats' remarks. And, uh, of course, Iran has promised to uh, cooperate with IAEA. But, uh, and, and by the way, they're, they're, they're ahead of schedule uh, must be a reason why they're ahead of schedule that they want to bring this report out. So uh, it seems like that it's not going to be long. Israel's going to have to act. And, and by the way, the, Ayla, the Ayatollah uh, Khomeini over there, he has actually uh, stated um, uh, uh, demanding its right to enrich uranium with Iranian Supreme Leader Ayatollah uh, Ali Khomeini recently saying Iran needs 19 times more nuclear centrifuges than the amount being offered by world powers. So it's very evident by his demand, uh, and, and I kind of speculate that he's already got it, uh, that he's ready to make the nuclear weapons uh, so that he can deliver his own payload where he would like it to go. Well, that is their goal. I think it is going to fall on Israel's shoulders to, um, to do something about it. <clears throat> but there's also another situation with, with the country that has nuclear weapons. It shows you that they're just a radical regime, to, or not even a regime, they're just a radical bunch of thugs to begin with. They're trying to make themselves a name by using their terror tactics. Well, it's not so much trying. They have made themselves a name. Um, they are trying to strike fears, fear in the heart of anyone and everyone. Uh, no doubt the beheading of both journalists, which, by the way, uh, the one, Steve there, he was uh, uh, had, had uh, done Aliyah. So... I did not know he was Jewish at the time, but uh, but the thing is, though, is had I known that, we would have known almost for certain that they would have killed him as well, just for the mere fact that he is Jewish. And um, but it's it's just really um, oh gosh, it, it, it's interesting to see how they work. There 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 seems to be no true strategy um, to their threats, their accusations. Uh, other than maybe their plans, they seem to be systematically trying to take over one country, spreading out, trying to get into Syria, and, uh, and, and no doubt uh, to fight the rebels uh, that are on the border of Israel, uh, I guess with the hope and intent, to, once they defeat them, then they can march into Israel next. I do believe that's the ultimate goal, and we're doing absolutely nothing to stop that. And we're not just making mistakes in foreign policy. I think I believe it's intentional. That, that's my belief. I think this White House, um, I think they want to balance 
balance of power. For whatever reason, I think they want a balance of power. And what that yes. means is the United States is not the power, and that um, the Islamists, and especially radical Islam, should have some equal share and equal power in the world. And it's already proving to be a disaster in the Middle East. Europe is starting to have real problems, and it's coming to the United States as well. And so we need to open our eyes. A lot of people, you know, unfortunately, a lot of Americans are very American-centric, and they see things only through American eyes. They don't travel. They don't read foreign news. Right now, I mean, Revelation, the book of Revelation talks about beheadings. These things are happening now. These, these things are happening right now overseas. There's a lot, there are a lot of things happening overseas, wars and threat, rumors of wars. They're all over. They're not happening here in the United States. But people need to open up their eyes and recognize the time that they're living in. Absolutely. They really need to wake up and pay attention. And I know you and I discussed the two witnesses, and I just want to say this one thing about the two witnesses. They're coming for a reason, and they're not coming to preach grace. They're coming as witnesses. You read, through, you can read through the Torah, and you will see what the witnesses why they were needed. And one of the, one of the primary you know, before there was a, for a capital offense, there had to be two or more witnesses before someone would be stoned. That's right. And God is sending the two witnesses to witness what is going on because He follows His own laws. Amen. Amen. That is exactly right. They even tried to bring false witnesses uh, against. Uh, Yeshua, and I thought it was kind of ironic that the scripture bears out that there were many, there were many witnesses that came, but then it said, but there were only two false witnesses that were found. And uh, it kind of made me think uh, in line, I know we'll go into that subject pretty soon anyway, but it made me think about today. There are many so-called witnesses coming today declaring to be witnesses uh, but God will eventually send two, and they won't be false this time around. And I don't think there'll be any doubt as to who they are. No, so, uh, it can't be. If the whole world hates them, I mean, clearly though, it's just like it's just like ISIS. ISIS uh, before, uh, you know, say six months ago, no one really probably knew who they were, and it would have, wouldn't have known the name of a single person in there. Uh, but since they named their caliphate and they murdered as many people as they they have. Now uh, the leaders of this organization have, have, have become world-known names. And so imagine when God is starting to bring down judgment with the two witnesses. Uh, and and for this, clearly the scripture says they will, the world will hate them for what they did unto them. So therefore, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely obvious. Well, Brother Rick, it's been a pleasure. We will be coming together, those of you that are watching there, we will be coming uh, together later, Brother Rick and myself, we're going to be discussing uh, the two witnesses, uh, some very interesting insights that uh, God has uh, shared with uh, Brother Rick that, that I would just love for you to be aware of as well. So God bless you. Baruch Hashem. I'm Stephen Ben Danun along with Brother Rick here uh, with Israeli News Live. Shalom and good night.